Hi, it's Melissa from Special Ed Law Mom. Today's video is about transitioning out of the medical system. Not really out of the system, but going from pediatric doctors to adults. We are in the middle of this at our house, and it is scary. It is scary. Um, so let me just give you a little bit of background, and then hopefully we can talk about some ways that may be helpful for you. So I have two kids with disabilities, if you didn't know that. At one point, we had 18 providers for each child. That included therapists. And um, that was difficult to have that many providers. And we were doing therapies times two in every way possible. Um, lots of, it was, aside from advocating, it was a full-time job just to do their medical. Um, different circumstances came up where we would switch doctors, but we always were within the same network, uh, which was a major network here where we live. And then we had some problems. I filed a complaint and suddenly uh, we were blacklisted um, from seeing any of the wonderful providers in that network. In fact, um, a receptionist uh, told us that a doctor we wanted to see had appointments and was taking new patients and she pulled up my child's names and read me a note that said that they were never to book appointments with us. You can imagine how that went. So I've been through the process of having to, to of being in a network and having to find new providers and it's really scary. But thankfully I did that years ago. So while there's different emotions attached now, it's not as scary. So at that time, we were able to find a clinic that was not affiliated with this network, which was rare or felt that way. And we went in and we met with the first doctor. Um, we met with the first doctor there. And I wasn't real impressed, but I was just happy to be out of the network we'd been in. And then one of my kids got sick and we went in for an urgent appointment and we met our favorite pediatrician that we've had ever since. And we were able to switch to him and he's been amazing. And I'll never forget in our first appointment, he looked at the list of doctors that we had and he asked me, why are you going to all these doctors? And he started going down the list and like one of them was a, I can't think of what to call them other than a poop doctor. And I can't, I'm sorry, that's gross, but, and he said, why are you, are you just going to them to get a prescription? Because I can manage that care. You don't, you don't need that doctor on that list. And it ended up that he was able to do that with the bulk of the doctors. And it was wonderful. And he has been so wonderful. And he has trusted me enough that every year my daughter has chronic health issues. And if she gets a cold, she declines really rapidly and he has trusted me and written a letter every year to the school system that my daughter is automatically excused to be excused if I call in because he trusts my judgment whether or not she can go to school. Um, I can call his office and he doesn't, he's not one of those that doesn't require the, you have to come in in order for me to do something. Um, or if we've been in, I can call and he'll you know, calling another, he's just been wonderful. So the idea of losing him is a little frightening and a little emotional because he's, he's become a friend. He's been, we've been with him for probably 15 years and it's been amazing. Um, the other one is our dentist. And in that situation, our dentist, the kid's dentist, uh, love him. He has retired um, and because he loves his patients so much and he knew he'd be sad to say goodbye, he didn't tell anyone until after he retired and he sent out an email, um, which is sad, but wonderful. So I, for the past, and that's another one we had for probably 15 years. So for that long of time, you know, does anybody know a good dentist? I do. I know a good dentist. Anybody know a good doctor? I do. I know a great doctor. Um, referred a lot of business to them. Never had to worry. Knew they were just a phone call away. Um, but now we're at the situation where we've been offered a placement in um, a program, a specialized program where they coordinate your care and they want to choose who the primary care doctor is 
and any mental health therapists and it helps with your insurance coverage and because of my youngest daughter's age we're looking at transitioning from her pediatrician that we know and love to an adult doctor anyways and so now would be a great time to do that and it's heartbreaking because the unknown is scary um, and again with the dentist he's retired so we're looking so I what I have done is just put my hat on like I always do whether it's for me for my kids what I did when they were little and realize that you are in the driver's seat so you are in the driver's seat as far as the doctors that you see the specialists that you see yes you have limitations with insurance if you have double insurance such as Medicaid you have limitations with that and yes you may have to drive a little bit farther to get an excellent doctor. Um, it might not be the one that's right at the clinic next door, or you may not jive well with them, but you are in the driver's seat. And so it's really important to know when you go in to meet with a doctor, um, give it a test run. It's not a permanent thing. Um, I already have a dentist picked out. Uh, the one doctor will essentially be chosen by this program that my daughter will go into. Um, so I don't have a lot of control over that, but we're able to keep some of our other specialists. So some specialists that I've had to use personally, such as an orthopedic or a cardiologist, I'm happy with them. They've worked well for me. So now I can use them if my children need them. So as with anything, if you're not happy, make sure don't butt the system, just move on, move on. There are plenty of people out there that can help and move on. And if you, for some reason, happen to have this ultra special specialist that there's only two in the whole state or something, and you don't like one of them, well, speak up um, because it's your health care and it's your child's health care. So, and just as you're nervous with them, reach out and see how receptive they are to disabilities. Um, we had, my oldest had to have her wisdom teeth done last, was it last summer? And I was a little nervous and it was an interesting experience that maybe I'll talk about sometime, but no fault of the dentist. We had never met the dentist our, or the oral surgeon. Our wonderful dentist had referred us to him, but even our wonderful dentist didn't know something. And that was that the oral surgeon had a child with disabilities, specifically autism. So we go in for the appointment and the staff is nice, but my daughter is freaking out. She hates needles. She's freaking out and the happy gas isn't working, which if it was for me, I'd be sucking it in and it would be working fine. But for her, it didn't calm her at all she was so wound up and the needle had freaked her out and all sorts of things and the doctor came in here I am as the mom going this is my 21 year old and I'm kind of embarrassed because she's screaming out loud this is what I'm thinking and the the oral surgeon came in they let me be in the room until she was completely out and he came in and he said it's okay, mom. I've got it. I have a kid with autism too. And they were so kind. He was so kind. And so if I had reached out ahead of time, I don't know if I would have found that out. Um, but I certainly know now that any oral surgeon needs will go to that guy. And I will highly recommend him. And, um, so in calling around for dentists the other day, you know, thankfully I had a connection with one that I knew about, but I, I just called up as if I was just a random person off the street and asked them how they are with people with disabilities. And I really appreciated the answer that they gave me. They wanted to know a little bit of history and then they went and they came back and said, no problem. Happy to help. Would love to help you. When, when can you come in? So you just have to sometimes disclose things up front, be up front, shop around. If you're not happy, then move on. Don't wait until your doctor has said, 
you know, I'm sorry I can't see you anymore and you have nothing else in place. You be the one that moves on as hard as it is so that you can have that smooth transition rather than we don't have any care. Now Johnny's sick. Now where are we going to go? What are we going to do? It's all panic. You have that in place as it needs to be to help with that transition. Um, another thing that may come up, we had this come up, my oldest, when she turned 22, um, our dental insurance no longer covered her, which is ridiculous because they're supposed to be covered medically until they're, I think, 26 or 27, but dental doesn't fall under medical. And so our dental insurance canceled her. And so we had to call around and thankfully the dentist that we have loved had a insurance plan that she could purchase um, for two, two visits. And so we did that. And when those run out, then we will, um, we will be moving on to a new dentist, but um, prepare for things like that. That was a big surprise to us. And um, she had to be deemed as being completely unable to care for herself for that coverage to continue. And that was kind of hard to do with a kid that's going into the master's program and works at a bank to declare that she couldn't take care of herself. So just know that things like that can happen and there's going to be a lot of things thrown your way. So I hope that this was helpful. It was a lot of information, but just know plan, 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 plan with both of my videos, transitioning out of school and transitioning out of medical, plan, plan, plan. And if something's not working, you're in the driver's seat. You take care of it. You make sure that what you're getting is appropriate and satisfactory to you. So if this video gave you any value, please hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you'd like to hear about. And until next time, make it a great day. Thanks. Bye.